Welcome to Zada. Zada is your source for trusted information on the Middle East, North Africa, and East Asia politics. I'm your host, Naska Zada. Here on Zada, we talk to experts, as well as the voices of ordinary people affected by the religion, culture, and political conflict of the region. I'll be guiding you through a discussion with a special guest so you get the most up-to-date information and perspectives. Share your thoughts on our show. Find out more and continue the discussion on Twitter and Facebook. Oftentimes, our discussions are serious, dramatic, or sometimes saddening. But what about funny? Today's guest is not a politician. He is not a religious figure. He is a comedian from Libya. My guest today is Mohanad al Shaiki. came to the United States in 2014 to attend a university and ended up seeking asylum soon after due to the Libyan civil war. He started telling jokes on a radio show back home and in just the past two years, he has gone from his first stand-up show to hosting popular podcasts, speaking on NPR, opening for national touring acts, and appearing in a comedy documentary. He has taught comedy and even gave a TED talk. Most recently, he was chosen to perform at the New York Comedy Festival. Muhammad al Shaiki is quickly becoming a rising star, and we are so lucky to have him here today. Mohanad, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. From Libya, yeah. teaching English, yeah. to TED Talk, to radio host, yeah. to a stand-up comedian in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. How's the USA? Uh, it is, I mean, uh, with everything you've mentioned, it's cool that in, in that, uh, uh, like in that aspect, uh, like being able to do comedy and like uh, making this my full-time job has been like very interesting. Uh, so I really love it. I love doing stand-up comedy. It's the best thing I've ever gotten to do. I would have never dreamt to do that if I was like back home because obviously it's, it, it is, stand-up comedy is not, is not a thing there. Uh, so yeah, everything is great, except if you want to uh, <laughs> look at the political side of it. For some it's, people. <laughs> yeah, for some people, then it's not that great. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, um, I, do, I didn't want to jump into that, but you mentioned it's not so great. Um, uh, you were shouted at once that go back to the Middle East, and you were yeah. like making a joke that how you're not actually from the Middle East because North Africa is not Middle East. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, which, which bothers me. I'm like, I, I wouldn't mind if it was like accurate racism. If like, if people are like, oh, go back to North Africa. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. I like that. You got it right. Maybe I'll go back. Uh, but uh, yeah, people just assume I'm from the Middle East because of my name and just like uh, uh, how I talk or how I look or whatever. Uh, but uh, it's, it's very interesting when, when people say such things and I'm like, uh, you, you didn't even get the region correct, so, yes, yeah. Yes, that's how. We're going to get more to um, racism and, and politics and all of that. Yeah. But I want to talk about how only in four years, it's amazing. When I was yeah. trying to, you know, do your bio, I'm like, wow, in four years, uh, Mohanna definitely done so much yeah. as a young um, Libyan yeah. uh, coming to this country. Yeah. How? How do you like this country? I mean, I, I honestly do really love being here. Like, uh, and I uh, obviously this is the place where I want to like live for the rest of my life, and uh, which is something I'm working on because I did apply for an asylum, mm -hmm. and I uh, in a few years hopefully I'll become a citizen. So this is definitely a place that I wanna uh, I wanna stay in, and I and I like it. I mean, like even like with with everything that's happening around and uh, and stuff, uh, it's I feel like I'm part of like the what's happening here and like mm -hmm. this is like kind of like my duty to make it better mm -hmm. so uh and there's like there's no place like there's like not perfect place like no matter where you go mm -hmm. so it's just like you have to like uh, go with the flow and live with what you have and just like work with it so that's what i'm trying to yeah. do and yeah. you're asylum seeker um yeah. you got your green card uh oh, i still haven't getting. i i recently got my asylum approved okay. which was Good. great congratulations yeah thank you so much yeah because that took four years and a half mm -hmm. to get it approved so I'm, I'm glad we uh, got that out of the way. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'll get my green card probably like in nine months or so. It's just a, it's just a, a matter of waiting now. Uh, so yeah. Let's talk about a clip 
that um, you're trying to name your roommate? Uh, it's about my roommate's name. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, let's yeah. watch. Uh, the other roommate's name is Gion. I don't know if you guys heard the name Gion before. I have it myself, so I asked, but you go, oh, that's a nice name. What does Gion mean? And he said, oh, Gion. Gion is an Italian name that translates to God is great. <laughs> yeah, and he said it that way, too. Uh, I was like, good for you. Okay. Uh, but I felt kind of jealous. Because I know for a fact that I cannot name my kid God is great in Arabic. <laughs> yeah. Cause that won't fly like that. Like that literally won't fly anywhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah. By Italian is cool. Yes. Let's talk about your background. And, and I know you don't yeah. want to be known as a Libyan or yeah. North African or Arab comedian. Yeah, you want to be yeah. like broaden your audience to, you want to make jokes about of course, yeah. everything that absolutely. you think it's funny. Um, I want to talk about, like you mentioned that in Libya or in Egypt or stand up comedian, not a thing. Yeah. So th Thinking back, were you, how did, did you ever imagine that you might be a stand-up comedian? You did, were you were exposed to that? World, Absolutely, but? yeah. So, uh, I mean, stand-up comedy was something I always loved. I loved watching, though. Uh, so I would just, like, spend a lot of time, like, on YouTube or whatever, like, just downloading stuff and watching stand-up comedy. So I was aware of, like, the uh, stand-up comedy in the U.S. and, like, uh, a lot of people that, uh, uh, that performed here. But uh, there was not a scene for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was, like, not... Also, like stand-up comedy is about like uh, like speaking truth to, uh, truth to power and like uh, kind of like making fun of everything. There is like nothing that is sacred. Uh, so, when, like in Libya or like as you mentioned in Egypt or like uh, some of these places, Saudi uh, Arabia, yeah, all of them, or Saudi all Arabia, of, yeah. uh, oh, oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get to that. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. These like in these places, like you're not supposed to talk about the government. And if you're not talk like if you're That's not writing fatal if you exactly do. Yeah. yeah so if I'm not writing jokes about that I'm not uh, if I'm not like like cannot critique like as high as I want to go then it's not the same because if if a stand up comedy is censored then it's not fun like there's mm -hmm. nothing. Um, there's nothing much to play around with, uh, so that's why I like to do it here because like here I can like t like I still get people mad like people still get upset mm -hmm. about like some some of the stuff I talk about like or criticize or something but. Uh, it's not legal. It's not like no one is like gonna like put me in jail for like saying like what I. They're gonna arrest you because you made exactly, fun yeah. of Donald Trump. Exactly. Yeah. People will dislike you. People will say uh, stuff to you on Twitter or whatever. Yes. Like I don't care about that. But as long as like no one's gonna take you to jail for like a joke, then you're you're fine. You know? But um, where um, in like in Libya or a place like Iraq or Saudi Arabia, they can actually take you to jail for just absolutely. Write, writing a poem, doing anything, absolutely, or yeah. not doing anything. Yeah, absolutely. So and that's the difference. Yeah, absolutely. And that happens a lot, especially in, in Saudi Arabia, where like people like are not even allowed to talk about the king or like the uh, the royal family, and they just end up uh, being like they just disappear. They're not even like you don't even know what the conditions they are in, and they obviously accuse them of all of like these like stuff that they sometimes they didn't even do. Mm -hmm. Just because they said something, and obviously, that, like that's not that's not a place for stand-up comedy to thrive, or it, like free speech to mm -hmm. thrive in general. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I was going through your tweets because you tweet a lot. I, yeah, I love I, tweeting I do. too. I do. And yeah. then you joke, you joke, or you joke a lot about, um, you know, uh, Donald Trump and his policies. Obviously, there's so much to talk about because you have immigration issues, yeah. the wall. Yeah. And you have travel ban, which you can relate in so many ways. Yeah. Do you think uh, comedy can be used as political activism? Uh, it can help, but it uh, but it's not to be confused with activism, okay. uh, because activism is something different. Activism is like if you want to be an activist, then you have to do and go and do activist stuff. You have like to pr like go on a protest in the street. You have to uh, actually, like you have to put yourself in more danger than stand-up comedy. Stand-up comedy is a tool, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that can help with activism. Like an example I can think of is like late night shows like uh, Stephen Colbert or like uh, Seth Meyers or like The Daily Show. Uh, I'm not expecting those people to change everything, but they do help a lot. Mm-hmm. In uh, in uh, and it can be used as like a, a political tool. Like if it was somewhere that is like Egypt, for example. Like uh, one example I can think of is Basim Yusuf. Yes, I was uh, about to ask. Exactly, you. yeah, because with his show, I believe that he made a lot of change because like he got, uh, he got a lot of people heated up and like, m- yeah, I w- like yeah, in that way, I'd be like, yeah, he definitely helped in it. But with Basim Yusuf, he actually put himself in danger and yes. he knew what he was going. But here, like, it's kind of like lower stake because like with stand-up comedy, I can like talk about whatever I want. I know no, like no one's gonna take me to jail or like uh, gonna threaten my family or something. So it's not it's not activism. Activism is different. What if you very vocal on certain topics, and what if actually they thre- do you not scared like someone might threaten your life? Like even here, like it's, it's so many po- like even oh, someone like yeah. Bassem, I'm sure he's like scared that they might do something to his life because of absolutely. what he says. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's. It's still not safe here because, like, I mean, like, we have, like, a, a gun violence issue. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's easier to get killed here than, than someone else. Because, like, like, like if, if we were in the Middle East or North Africa or something, you worry about the government doing something to you. But here, like, civilians have guns. So, like, it can be anyone. Yes. Uh, so it is, it, is more, it is more dangerous. Uh, but, I mean, It, it can yeah. be dangerous, too. And there's a lot of laws in this country, which is you feel a little bit more protected. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, like, yeah, that like like free speech or like even like using social media mm-hmm. and stuff like that does help a lot with the uh, like the uh, the polo- like political discourse and like like making change and stuff like that. Uh, but at the same time, like like this is like let's say this is like 30 or 40 percent of it. It helps a lot. But then the 60 percent is just like the rest of it is like people actually doing stuff mm-hmm. and like kind of like either either like running for congress or because a lot of people did that now like younger people and mm-hmm. like uh, women of color and stuff like that so that's also i i consider that to be activism as well like taking action to i find comedian to be activist too yeah i personally i don't know like about everyone else because i feel like when you are funny you can actually express your point a lot, you know, in a funny way. Absolutely, Way yeah. better than somebody who is, like, not funny and serious than this way. Absolutely. I, I take it and also, you know, like, Saturday Night Live and, Absolutely. and all yeah. of that. They of make course. fun of, like, they bring to- very heavy political topics mm-hmm. that, but it's a lot easier to, you know, laugh at it and digest it. Absolutely. I mean, it does help a lot with, like, getting the point across. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, uh, because for example, like, I watch most of my news, like, on, like... Uh, on Twitter? On, like, no, I'm yeah, on t- like, no, no, seriously. <laughs> Twitter is, like, I helps a lot. I do that sometimes. Yeah, but also, like, late night TV, because mm-hmm. they, it, it's, like, sandwiched in jokes. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. easier to digest. Yes. Because, like, like, watching CNN or watching... BBC or whatever. Sometimes it gets so boring. You just boring. want to commit suicide. Exactly. Yeah, it is so boring and yeah. they're so dull sometimes. I'm yes. like, I can't sit. So I'm like, I have to get my news. Mm-hmm. And stand-up comedy is the same. Like, I can like, I can either sit and teach people about myself and tell them stories and whatever, mm-hmm. and have them zone out, mm-hmm. or I can tell them my what I, what I want to tell them in jokes, and people are like, you have their attention. And if you make people laugh, you get your point across way faster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then um, we mentioned that you don't want to be known just being Libyan. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, young comedian, mm-hmm. and you wanna how how do you see um, other like do you see that like um, diverse comedians coming out these days a lot more compared to yeah. you have um, Hassan, Hassan um, Minaj, Minhaj, yeah. which we're gonna talk about his uh, drama with, <laughs> yeah, with Netflix a little yeah. bit. But um, do you think how much it's it's improved in this country that there's a lot of other uh, comedians coming out and saying, "Hey, I can be funny, but I don't have to be just funny about my background, you know, Absolutely. or about the opposite." Because a lot of you know, it's Absolutely, like when yeah. you are comedian. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like uh, action happening when it comes like diversity wise. Mm-hmm. Now you can like see like more like uh, comedians of color and like uh, stuff like that taking the stand and like. Uh, which is which is great. I mean, it's still like the issue has not been solved yet because like there's it's still like a very white industry and mm-hmm. like uh, but you see a lot of diverse voices and that helps it's a lot. It's very white and male. 
Absolutely. Industry, Absolutely. I think. I don't know. No, it is. That's one hundred percent true. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, with those diverse voices, like it, it does help. Like even change, ha like the like TV shows format, and like and uh, like the way people tell jokes, and like uh, uh, the shows that you see on Netflix or whatever. Because like now people are more exposed to different ideas, and mm -hmm. uh, like. People that come like from different backgrounds and different families, so they perceive stuff differently and mm -hmm. how they see funny. And you have a even like now a bigger audience because mm -hmm. like now I watch Hassan Minaj, even if he doesn't talk about like his background or like yeah, I I know what you're talking about. Like he talks about his parents or he talks mm -hmm. about like his family or growing up like uh, being a brown parent. I'm like oh, this is something I can relate mm -hmm. to. I get it. Mm -hmm. uh, versus like when you see like maybe like it was like a white comedian or something. I'm like okay, yeah, I mean it's funny, but like. At the same time, like you don't relate to it at the same level, and I still like like it. I mean, I'm I don't I'm not like oh no, I just want to see people of color doing stuff. I'm I'm like I just wanted to see everyone. Yes. Yeah, not just like one type of person over and over. Is it again. harder to come up with jokes? Because I assume like you think it's like my audience is very broad. It's not yeah. just this background where I am familiar with because four years in this country. It's you know it's a lot, but still not a lot. But then you have a lot of followers like they you know, they're white and they, they think yeah. you're super funny yeah so is it harder you think to be that broad or it's it is amazing? i mean it is it's always a challenge yeah. uh but uh also people like like but people like follow me or like follow uh t because like i have like a special or like a specific perspective on stuff mm -hmm. so like even if i talk about like a topic that they can relate to uh, people want to see my take on it, so like I have a different take from what they have, so it's more fun that way. And I like also like I like e even though like I don't want to be introduced as like a Libyan comedian or like an Arab mm -hmm. comedian because like people like would assume that I'm gonna talk about like certain topics, yes. but I would still like use that in my because that's still a part of me and of I'm gonna course, I'm yes. gonna use it obviously, uh, but the way I want to use it. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like because like people expect you to do it in a specific way, yes. and then you like you do it like in completely different. Way. Like oh okay, I didn't expect that. Uh, so yeah, it's just about like how can like like the surprise element as well. That's fantastic. Yeah, and I also want to talk about how um, uh, the Minhaj. I want to talk about Libyan comedian. Was there anyone that you can remember growing up in Libya that influenced you, or you know, you thought about them? Yeah, I mean, there was definitely like uh, there, there are funny people, but there's no stand-up comedy. So it's just there, like there, that concept doesn't absolutely, exist. Absolutely, yeah. there was no stand-up comedy, but there were more uh, like uh, there was like a lot of theater and like plays and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was comedy, just not stand-up. It has mm -hmm. to be like put in a like a story format or something. So there was a, a lot or of TV funny people. TV shows or yes, exactly, yeah, like yeah. sitcoms and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So uh, there was that. And yeah, I can remember there were like a lot of funny people that like I was like, oh, this is like something I I like what they're doing and stuff. Uh, but also, uh, as I say, because like all of like the constraints that were put uh, around it, like certain topics you yes. can't talk about, I just couldn't like. I'm like ah, but this is what you I want to talk be about. Connected yeah, exactly. Because even before moving here, I always like my parents used to get mad at me because I'm like, I'm like, don't joke about these stuff. Like, don't, I'm like, yeah. But I'm like, I just can't. So the freedom of speech. Yeah. Like you have more, you feel like it's more free. Exactly, freedom. yeah. Yeah, and because like, I want to make... I can say that publicly? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Because that's just my percent. Like, I want to make fun of everything. Yeah. Like, I just, like, have an opinion about everything. I don't care if it's, like, correct or not, Let's whatever. Let's talk about Trump then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> favorite topic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I know we were exchanging um, notes uh, before the interview, yeah. and you were like, um, you used some strong words. You were like, I hate him. Yeah, oh my I God, yes. <laughs> I've never hated someone as much, yeah. Um, you, it's, it's very, it's funny and it's sad. You're, yeah. Today, you're the second person used that word strongly because I think the word hate is very strong yeah. um, to describe someone, and it was describing, you know, the president of the United States. Yeah. So tell me about that. Yeah. See, no, I hate it. I hate him so much because I never thought I would hate someone as much as I hate like Bush or something or like even yeah. like Gaddafi. Like now was you miss the, Bush too. <laughs> the, see, the thing is with Bush at least, like he was a horrible person, but you would be like, oh, this is a person I would hang out with in a barbecue. He seems like a fun dude. He's okay. just like dumb I or whatever. I understand it. I don't want to slap him. <laughs> exactly. But with, with Donald Trump, I'm like, I don't want to hang out with you, period, ever. <laughs> You're just disgusting and stupid. Uh, and, and it's just like, it, it is just like, because like, he's not evil. He's just like stupid evil too, which is yeah. like, 
there's like so many layers to him that makes me hate him. Like everything that comes out of his mouth. I'm like, do you even like try to be likable? This is very like, like it's very human. Uh, exactly. And honestly, uh, it is very like uh, another thing that makes me upset is just like comedy wise. It's very hard to write jokes about him. Because like I thought it would be easy, is it? Like he's just It is not because I don't know, I'm not a comedian but Oh I, no, absolutely. Cuz like how like it's very hard to write a joke about something that is a joke. Oh. Okay. You know, cuz everything he then says yeah. cuz like 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 when like even with President Obama or like Clinton or whatever like there was like a room to play around with to make, take something serious they yeah. said and like kind of like mock it. Uh, and make it sound like ridiculous but like when you're saying something that sounds like it's straight from Saturday Night Live mm -hmm. it's very hard to mock it when it's like you're you're you making already know it's, exactly, it's funny exactly you're making a mockery out of yourself yeah. and now I'm like I'm not sure how to navigate making fun of you because you're stupid now I understand I yeah. could not I thought it might be even yeah. for comedian is like oh this is gonna be funny but now I see yeah. you tell me that perspective exactly that's um uh, that's very interesting about him. Which topics, when he discussed his policies, obviously we're talking about, not, you know, as a human, let's just uh, put that aside. Yeah. Which policies that you think that's the most ridiculous? Uh, travel yeah. ban, Islamophobia, because the rise of Islamophobia in this country is, is you know, it's it, increased it is, a lot since he is president. Well, or it's more vocal, it's not increased. I think it's more people I think feel it, like they can express that more. exactly i mean like like racism and like all of like hating muslims and stuff like that uh uh it all existed before and now it's just been given a, a platform because yes. uh, these people like were just silent because i'm like oh i can't say that out loud mm -hmm. but then you they saw a person who is the president of their country saying all of these stuff it gave them more space to say i'm like oh okay i guess i can say these stuff now oh i mm -hmm. i thought i can't but now they're just like, they feel like more comfortable doing these things. And that's what made it way more dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, I mean, like when it comes to his policies, I mean, like the travel ban is obviously very stupid. And it's like, it's like the wall. It's not, they know deep inside that it's not for anything but to uh, pander for their base. Because their base are like, are like full of like people like, who are like, uh, like afraid of like different people and like xenophobic and like, and they're just feeling that. I mean, Donald Trump knows the world will not work. Mm -hmm. He knows that, but he's just doing that because for his base, because that, that is gonna make his base safe, or that's what they think, the illusion of safety. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, this is like something that's like not, it's not that Donald Trump is coming up with those like rhetoric or whatever. These have been used like over the years, like by like mm -hmm. several dictators, like mm -hmm. you create a national crisis mm -hmm. and then you solve it. Mm -hmm. But there's no crisis yeah. and there's no need for solution because there's nothing to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have a crisis on the borders. There is no crisis. Yeah, uh, on Facebook, people checking themselves safe. From, exactly. I, I just thought I'm like, oh, this is really neat. Exactly. Yeah. So there's no crisis, but uh, and and he's like making more crises out of it because like there's like now the government shut down and like people are not getting paid. Now this is a crisis. If I'm like. If I'm like a low income person who is not getting paid, this is a bit crisis for me, like not getting paid. But then paid. it's not his creation. What people don't know, government shutdown been there almost oh, absolutely. like, you know, absolutely. often. It was not like something because we have um, Donald Trump as absolutely. president. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, mean, I was in happened. D.C. for 10 years. It was happening often. So it's yeah. not something I mean, it's happened. just during Obama, during Bush, during the previous president. Yeah. But I think I think this, the the uh, the different thing about it you don't you've never seen a president brag about shutting down the government. True. I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, like treating it as if it was like dehumanizing things. Ex yeah, exactly. Because like because like everyone else who the government shut down during their time knew that was like something that shouldn't oh, happen. Yeah, and like, it's, oh, it's I bad. need to work it's on bad, it. Yes. But this guy is like, oh, we'll shut it down for uh, as long as we need. I don't care. I'll shut it down. I'm proud to say that. I'm like, oh, no, you don't say I'm proud to say that. I'm yeah. proud to do that. It just doesn't make it just, sense. It's just, it's just very, um, the vocabulary. I was just talking to a Republican and uh, my problem was just, I'm like, maybe the vocabulary is really wrong. We need to tone it down. I think yeah. something that they need to think about. I want to talk about um, your favorite comedian ever. Oh, <laughs> oh! I mean, I don't have a favorite comedian. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of uh, comedians that I love. Uh, one of and my I, I know you don't want to be like anyone else out there because no, I was no, reading I mean, about you. You want to be, which is, 
a, a really great idea. Like I mean, unique, no one is unique. exactly. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's very true. But also, like, no one is like like anyone else. No. That's that's my perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, even when someone was like, "Oh, you're gonna be the next uh, Dave Chappelle," or like whatever, uh, which is obviously no one said to me, but like in general, like because yeah. that's just a, a big name, like people know that you're not going to be that person because that person still exists. Yes, yes. Uh, and experiences in life, n none of us can be. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I like a lot of people. I like John Mulaney a lot. That's I like him a lot. I've I seen him John in D.C. Um, yeah. on stand-up Yeah, comedy. he's he's wonderful. Um, I just like everything about him. I like his him. comedy because it's clean and it's also f so funny. Like he a lot of amazing. comedians, they can be so, like, because I'm female, sometimes I get offended, like, by certain vocabularies comedians can use especially older ones but john was i'm just like this is refreshing i love no, john, it john mulaney is great i like him a lot i like uh uh best selling as well uh uh parna a lot there's like so many people that i like i i, I mean i in general i just like i like smart comedy what it's just like it's not just like saying random stuff and just making people laugh because even a baby can make you laugh yeah uh but it's just like like kind of like like oh I, like I can see that you spent a lot of time like crafting this joke and mm -hmm. making it like like hit with people and it's very smart and like you like like getting your points across and I can relate to it somehow yeah this like I like I like intelligent comedy so this is what like these people provide yes I think yeah. I'm, I opened my phone because I'm going to um, a tweet about Hassan Minhaj we talked about that and the drama between him and Netflix because his comments on yeah. Saudi Arabia and King Salman. And um, I tweeted to a friend in Saudi Arabia because he's an expert and he's a good friend. Yeah. Um, I, I said, what do you think about that? Because Amnesty International tweeted that uh, the censorship on him is latest proof of crackdown on freedom of expression in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you think? Because, you know, he's really honest guy and he's out there doing interviews. And he was writing to me, uh, my opinion, um, I'm against stand-up comedy to talk about uh, outsiders, religion, race, or people in general. Your thoughts? Uh, that's so funny. Uh, was your friend Saudi? Yes. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Well, I, I just, oh, I always feel like I need to reach out to those people too, that, uh, oh, from absolutely, that. absolutely, yeah. Because, you know, at the end of the day, they have different experience and perspectives. I too. mean, with all due respect to a lot of, like, because a lot of my, like, Saudi friends and stuff like that, a lot, like, most of them are just, like, so brainwashed to the point where it's just like they can't see uh like they can't see their king or like uh, uh, uh mbs yeah like doing anything wrong which mm -hmm. is like not true because like the facts are there and the facts that he did kill a journalist for expressing his opinions and then you want to be mad about because uh, a comedian criticizing him I'm like if if you cannot take a joke maybe you shouldn't be a king like it's just uh uh, it's just as easy as that. Uh, but also, uh, not talking, like, like you, the yeah. comment about, like, not talking about, like, a different religion. Or I'm like, no, absolutely not. I, you would talk about, like, any, anything you want. Yeah. As long as you're not, as you're not being demeaning or, like, uh, like just trying to offend people. Yeah. Uh, like, you're making, like, you're making good points. And that's what Hassan Manaj did in his, that episode about Saudi Arabia. I watched this episode twice and I think it's great. Like, nothing he said mm -hmm. crossed the line. It was all uh, rooted in facts and truth. So yes, it was um, freedom of expression for someone like him, like yeah. you, and how you gonna be, um, you know, not allowed to, to say that. And I wanna ask you, I just remembered what I wanted to tell you that, um, you do criticize Saudi Arabia, a country like that a lot on Twitter, yeah. on social media in general. Are you not hesitant or afraid that they might come after you even on Twitter I mean if they do they do I mean like uh, I mean, it, like freedom of speech comes with a risk obviously and it's not just Saudi Arabia like even like people like uh, as I mentioned they like like people who have guns and stuff like that so I mean like I'm at a point now where I'm like if I'm like afraid of people I will never be able to say anything mm -hmm. uh, so you just say what you have to say and you, you just you just hope for the best for, uh, for the best yeah exactly i'm like if they come after me or they do and then uh, great well, well you have a national tour coming up right what's that um you're gonna have a tour to do stand-up comedy yeah yeah you have um some of that exciting things do you know the places you're gonna go can you share some of that absolutely yeah uh i'm gonna be uh between the 15th to the 20th i'm gonna be at austin texas Fantastic. Uh, at cap city comedy club uh for uh five days there 
and uh, and then I'm gonna have have some shows in uh, in Washington. I'm doing Washington State University uh, on the 26th, uh, and then I have some like stuff planned like around like the West Coast and stuff. I, I keep everything posted on my website. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. That's really we wish you very um, luck and thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for of course, joining thank you for us. Thank you having me. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it.